this is kind of hard to um, to get your mind around, but that is an old religion, very very old, like four or five thousand years, six thousand years ago. Um, they started sacrificing people, children and young men, on a regular basis, and thought that that was okay. I think it's a distortion that appeared in the goddess cultures when the pagans eventually this was a big fight between the pagans and the christians the christians were the people who said no more sacrifice and and the pagans um that was how they felt they were freeing up energy that could then be used to make something happen so if you killed somebody that energy was freed up and um you know and then you could use it to do something with i don't think they had a clear understanding of the nature of reality or frequencies or any of that stuff so um and so they had a lot of um i call it voodoo language that they used a lot of superstitious stuff so fast forward to the time when we have the take by the popes and um, those people continued to do the old religion, even though they were saying, you know, this is about Jesus and this is about love and this is about the saints, almost all the saints, all the saints were people who were, um, you know, who did some kind of dirty work for the the Rome for the papacy in Rome and I was just so disheartened when I realized that it's like oh my god they weren't they weren't spiritual people at all they were people who did some kind of murdering or conquering for Rome so anyway the um, people in Rome continued to practice this religion because it was their old religion, but they were um, pushing this other religion be called Christianity because it was much more profitable and because it aligned them with the common man who was so downtrodden that the anger, it's kind of like what we have today. People are angry about what's going on. And so whoever manages to to pull in that anger and and make those people give those people a say and bring them into a feeling of power that's what the christians managed to do and so they continued that because they got the backing of the common folk um, who were not educated and who were just angry over the conditions of their lives and they made a lot of money and they continued to practice you know their old religion which was based on sacrifice um and so they have still continued to do that um and then on top of that because the christians um one of the major tenets of christian teaching was sex is bad sex is only for procreation so what happened with that was that a lot of people became sexually I don't know what to call it, um, you know, their sexual ideas and their ability to engage in sex in, in a way that was beautiful um, disappeared. Everybody felt guilty about sex. Everybody. It was only okay if you were married and you had to be married to only this person, and that was only a way of controlling women. That's why they made those rules. But, um, you know, over time, the whole sexual thing became so twisted because sex is, is number one, it's a way of connecting to the God within the self. That moment of orgasm, that's the moment when you connect to that God within. And, and the other thing was that it was also a pathway to evolution, to the evolution of consciousness, to the awakening. And uh, they didn't want that. They didn't want any more kundalini happening. They didn't want any awakened people. They did not want people in their power. 
So what we have today are cultures, a lot of them, around the world where sex is very tightly controlled and there's all these restrictions. And so they end up, um, you know, in a lot of the, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the culture is. But if you don't have access to women, you're going to go after men. Why? Because you need to have sex in order to reorganize your own frequencies. That orgasm resets and reestablishes, retunes all your frequencies. And that's a major issue right there. And, um, and the other thing is that, um, you know, if you... If you don't have access to people to make love with or be a lover with or just to love, just to love and just to touch, doesn't, you know, doesn't have to be sexual, then you're going to, you end up with people that have a totally twisted sense of um, how do I get what I need? And so they try to hide what they need and then have the perfect opportunity for pedophilia and you know, sex slavery and all that kind of stuff. And so we got a whole world full of people. And I think the thing that was the most shocking, if I could say, or the, maybe it was the smartest thing the cabal members did was keep their eye out for people who were twisted, who had urges, who were the most frustrated. And, um, you know, and they just invited them in and once they invited them in and, and set them up to do something that that society does not approve of, then they videotaped that and said, ha, we got gotcha. you. So now you're going to do what we say. So those people continue to do what they're told because the option is they're going to be revealed and then everybody's going to heap judgment on them. So when I talk about people want privacy, why? Because everybody is so damn judgmental. They need privacy in order to have even a little bit of um, dignity or self-worth. Uh, we're going to have private. You can't have privacy in a telepathic community. But we're going to have privacy until we stop judging. And until we say, you know, yeah, man, I know, I know what you went through. I know what that's like. Um, you know, it's, it's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you had to feel guilty about that. Or I'm sorry that you couldn't um, get what you needed in a way that society would approve of. So we got a lot of twisted stuff. Um, and I think it's, a, it's a sign of the times when a civilization gets too distorted and nobody's needs are getting filled, it collapses. We have to go back to filling people up. They have to have permission to be who they are and boundaries in terms of what's not okay. And I don't know how we're going to do that. We just have to.